All right, hi everyone, my name is Matthew Kress, and today we're going to be talking more specifically on yogurt temperatures and when you are heating and cooling your milk and when you are incubating your yogurt in a more detailed, in-depth uh, process. And so when you are getting started to make your yogurt, uh, you are going to put all of the milk that you're wanting to become yogurt into your stock pot and you're going to heat it up to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit or uh, 82 degrees Celsius. Now, uh, the reason why we are heating up the milk to this specific temperature is because when you have milk at a refrigerated temperature or at room temperature, your milk proteins are going to be laced together and it's going to have a certain combination. It's going to have a certain type of matrix that it is holding, which is why it stays at a certain consistency at the temperature that it is at. Uh, when you are heating up the uh, milk for it to become yogurt at the 180 degrees Fahrenheit or 82 degrees Celsius, what you are essentially doing is you are taking these protein matrices and you are relaxing them so that they can be more malleable later on when you then introduce a yogurt strain. These open matrices then will be instructed by your yogurt strain during an incubation process and the incubation process when you're in the oven with your milk with a bacteria that is from here the bacteria from this yogurt will instruct the proteins in the milk to go from this relaxed open state into a congealed protein uh, matrix that holds like yogurt. And this is why when you make a, uh, a new batch of yogurt, it will always seem like or resemble the previous batch of yogurt that you are making. If you have a consistently thin yogurt, it will always make another thin type of yogurt, in most cases, of course, unless if you're an expert and you're doing this, then you're probably not watching this video. But your next batch of yogurt will always resemble the one that you were previously handling. And so, uh, next, the what I wanted to talk about is the first heating uh, section and, at, and as you're denaturing those proteins. Uh, when you are heating up your milk, you want to do this gently over a, if it's possible, over a longer period of time. What I have in my kitchen setup here in my cute little kitchen in France is a, um, it's got a knob and so it's electric. And if I put all of my three liters or three quarts of milk in my stock pot and I put it on a one, and I will put my probed thermometer, this is also uh, something that you will need in order to make milk. You can also use one of these, but you will need a thermometer. Uh, if I put all of that on a one, it will heat to about 130, 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So just under, about 30 degrees under the necessary temperature for it to be at. And I can leave it there for hours if I want. And what will happen is as that milk gently warms, it will uh, start to evaporate a little bit and so you'll get a more reduced product, which will result in a thicker yogurt, which sometimes is nice, but sometimes that's not necessarily, not necessarily the goal. And so what I will do is I will heat up my milk in my stock pot for about 30 minutes just to get it warm and then what I'll do is I will crank up the heat and I will stir with my whisk making sure that it's not uh, curdling at the bottom or it's not attaching and uh, bubbles will form those are natural those will also go away as you incubate and uh, then I will just read my thermometer reading whether it be here or here uh, until it hits about 180 degrees Fahrenheit, 82 degrees Celsius. Then once it hits that specific temperature, you can go a little bit above. Uh, you can honestly, you can go from 175 to 80 to 80 to 185. The range is more of a 
uh, guideline and it's not a very strict rule. Uh, obviously, 180 degrees Fahrenheit is not 160. You don't want to only eat it heat up to 160 because it needs to be heated up to a specific temperature for the proteins to actually denature. Once they are actually denatured, then it will take the form of the yogurt that you're inoculating with. And so, uh, and for reference, you are going to be heating the milk to the point that is just below a simmer. Technically, the, the milk is heated to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, and a simmer happens at 185. And so you're just getting the milk hot enough until it's right before the point of simmering, which then very easily transitions into boiling. You do not want to boil your milk. Uh, it leaves for more of a dead product, and it's not as enjoyable in the yogurt that you get the very end is less consistent, uh, but it still does work. Uh, the best, what works the most is a temperature controlled environment of heating your milk gently to 180 degrees Fahrenheit slash 82 degrees Celsius. Next. All right, so next we're gonna talk about cooling your milk down. You can either cool your milk down, just turn the heat off and just let it sit until it hits temperature, or you can cool it down in a cool water bath in your sink, for example. Uh, when you're cooling down your milk, you should be cooling it down to either 150, at least 115 degrees Fahrenheit or 45, 46 degrees Celsius. And it can be, and this is the maximum temperature that your milk should be at when you inoculate with your next batch of yogurt. And you inoculate with one teaspoon per liter or quart of milk that you are using. And so uh, if I were to inoculate at 120 degrees Fahrenheit, for example, the milk would be too hot and I would kill my yogurt. Or if I were to inoculate and I were to forget about my heated up milk product and it were to cool all the way down to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe 105, uh, when I inoculate with my yogurt and I put it into my warm milk, my bacteria will still be alive. And so technically, you do not want to inoculate when your milk is too hot. That will kill the yogurt. But you can inoculate if your milk is a little bit too cold. Uh, in any case, the temperature that you incubate at must, must, must respect the temperature guidelines uh, of the yogurt culture. And that typically ranges depending on the type of yogurt that you are making. Um, I usually like to keep mine between 110 and 113, 14 for my yogurt and that usually uh, incubates and sets within three to four hours. You can also do it all the way down to about 104 and that'll take a little bit longer, such as like uh, six hours or maybe even eight hours to incubate all the way until the yogurt sets. Um, but when, if you are inoculating and your milk is technically too cold, you do need to bring it up to temperature with either uh, a warm water bath or a warm oven that will bring that whole thing back up to temp. And then once it hits that temperature, uh, then you start your timer. So uh, that is the most important section of when you're cooling down your milk and inoculating. Inoculate only, uh, not never too hot, and it can be too cold, but it must then be incubated at the proper yogurt fermenting temperature. All right, so next we are going to talk about the actual incubation temperature when you have your inoculated milk in your oven or in your hot box, whatever you're using, to have a final end product of your yogurt. So uh, technically, yogurt temperatures vary, and a lot of online sources, there are millions of people that have made yogurt before, there are a ton of things that work and that don't work uh, that we have found out throughout the years of baking yogurt. Uh, so technically the range is 104 degrees uh, Fahrenheit all the way up to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. The warmer your temperature, 
the quicker it will ferment. Uh, those temperatures uh, in uh, Celsius are 40 degrees to 46 degrees Celsius. Uh, and so if I were to uh, incubate my inoculated milk at 104 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius, I would then expect for my product to uh, set and become uh, yogurt within six to eight hours just about. That is if my temperature is, in, is very stable there. If my temperature is a little bit higher, such as 108 or 110, so about maybe 43 degrees uh, Celsius, then it would set in maybe uh, five hours, maybe four or five hours. And then if I am at the upper range, so between about maybe 110 all the way up to 115, my yogurt would then set in maybe about three to four hours, depending on how warm your oven is depends on how quickly your milk will then ferment, the bacteria will eat the lactose and will then re-form uh, its protein matrix to make yogurt and have your final product. Uh, incubation is really easy. You have nothing to do. Uh, and if anything happens, all in your yogurt has not set, one thing you need to do is either let it check your temperature, of course. It can either be like this or like this. Check your temperature or uh, check the yogurt. Make sure that those are the two things you always need to look at is to see if your yogurt has set. Uh, you can put your uh, probe or your thermometer uh, either directly in the yogurt that is sealed or you can put it into a water bath, or if you have a high tech oven, you can put it at temperature control there. However, it is a very, very smart idea when you are starting out to measure uh, uh, precisely the actual temperature of the milk or water bath that you are using because those will give you the most consistent results, period. The temperature that is shown on the front of your oven it's not an accurate, is not an accurate reading. Uh, they usually have a certain uh, range of error that the manufacturer allows, and you will not have a stable product. What you do want is to preheat your oven and then uh, put that yogurt in, well, the inoculated milk in, and then to pay attention closely for the first 30 minutes to see if your temperature is stable or not. If your temperature is not stable, keep looking at it until for about 15 minutes, the yogurt uh, temperature has not moved. Uh, I do this every single time I make yogurt. There are a few things that require active, uh, active attention from me when I make yogurt, and that is when I'm heating up my milk, when I'm cooling it down, and then it's first 30-ish minutes when it's in the oven, when I'm just making sure that I have my yogurt at a stable temperature. Once I see that, I let it go for a specific amount of time, and then I pull it when I want to check on it. So now let's talk about checking on your yogurt. If I check on my yogurt maybe too soon, my yogurt will not be as solid. And so what will happen is I will pull it up from the oven and it will be still kind of soupy, it just will be too liquid. When your yogurt has set, you will be able to open it up and you will, you, you must open it uh, and you will do one of these with it. And you will see on the top edge, the, the yogurt will pull like this from its edge. It'll be, the entire thing should be solid. If anything, you may have a little bit of whey on top, that's normal, but the set yogurt will be completely solid. And if it's not, simply put the lid back on and put it back in the oven and or wherever you're heating it up and let it continue. If it's been a uh, uh, too long for your opinion and you're not sure why it's not setting, uh, then your oven may be too cold. And what that means is that maybe you're not getting an accurate reading from your probe or thermometer and that you need to pay more attention. Uh, 
crank your oven up a little bit higher and make that reading go up at least three to five, three to five degrees uh, Fahrenheit or two to three degrees Celsius, and then uh, maintain it at that specific temperature for uh, at least 30 minutes to maybe even an hour. And then you should have a noticeably more set final product. You can keep pulling your yogurt uh, every 30 minutes and you can keep a very close eye on it to see it slowly uh, come together to have a final set product. And actually that is a fun experiment to do when you're first getting started, uh, is to watch it, watch it very slowly uh, become yogurt. And I don't do it much anymore, but it was very instructive when I was getting started. One thing that I will mention is never, 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 never stir the yogurt when it is incubating, you will destroy the end product. It will not work. Never stir. Uh, wait, and then, because you do not want to disturb the bacteria while it's forming a protein matrix. If you stir and you break apart that protein matrix, it will not come back together again. Uh, that is just a steadfast rule in all yogurt making. So, uh, if you also find that your yogurt product is not tart enough, what you can do is then also, uh, so as your bacteria are eating the lactose in your milk, they are creating lactic acid. And the more uh, lactose the bacteria eat, the more lactic acid they then have as a final end product. And so if you want to have your yogurt to be a little bit more tart, then you just simply Make sure that you are incubating it completely and for a longer period of time. A longer incubation past its set point, past the point where it has set and you have a final product, will then make for an even more uh, tart final product. I will say though, that if you do push your yogurt too far, you will stress, and it's kind of uh, a very, uh, airy fairy way of saying, but you will stress the bacteria and your yogurt culture will not take as well uh, when you do your future incubation uh, uh, yogurt making processes. Your bacteria won't be as happy and it won't be as plentiful. If you over incubate your population, so what's going on is when you inoculate, you have your initial and it will, your initial strain of yogurt and it will populate your jar. If you keep populating your jar and it gets too hot, your yogurt will kind of weep and it will, the, the whole population of the bacteria in the yogurt will then not be able to tolerate the too hot of a temperature and then your population will kind of dwindle a little bit. And so there is this point of getting it and once it's hit that maximum point, then you pull it. And that's when you have perfect yogurt every single time, uh, which is, then leads me to say why I'm not a big fan of very long overnight processes of making yogurt uh, at higher temperatures because they just don't produce the very consistent results. Uh, and that is very consistent with like gaps type yogurts or other types of like longer yogurt making processes. Uh, there are other ones that do uh, ferment at lower temperatures, but I do not have experience in those and uh, they are a little bit hard, they're a little bit more finicky and they're a little bit more um, hard to make. When you have a low temperature yogurt that you are uh, incubating, those yogurts always, their final product will never, never, never be as firm as a uh, higher temperature yogurt uh, incubation process. Uh, and so also one other thing to know is that the cooler your incubation time, the looser your yogurt will be. And so also, uh, also that means if you have a higher incubation time, a uh, higher incubation temperature, uh, your yogurt will hold uh, a little bit firmer, which is the type of process that I use. And so how about, let me grab some, let me see if I can get a good visual for you. So this is my yogurt. You can see how well that holds on the spoon, how high that is. Honestly, like, I am, 
I impress me with how, how nice that holds. But, so, uh, I have a higher temperature with my uh, yogurt incubation time. Uh, one other thing is that when you have a uh, higher incubation time in a stiffer yogurt, it will have whey, the whey protein, whey protein uh, liquid that will be uh, leaking more often from your product and that is a very normal process. When you have a lower temperature yogurt, uh, you'll have a thinner consistency and you will have less of that liquid whey that is expressed uh, as you are serving yourself in your yogurt. So that is all I have on uh, yogurt temperatures all the way from heating up your milk to your final end product of your yogurt incubation. And now that I'm doing my end words, I'm realizing also when you pull it from the oven and you are done and your uh, yogurt is set, your yogurt will be warm to touch, which is very normal. Uh, then uh, you can, tr you can uh, pull it and look at it if you like, but yogurt is best oh, when it has set overnight to chill. And so then at that point, your yogurt should cool down and it will gel into a very nice, beautiful yogurt product. So now that was truly the end. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments on the yogurt heating process, uh, the milk and yogurt heating process, uh, please let me know. If you have other comments or you have other types of experiences, also let me know. I would love to know what works for you. Uh, once again, my name is Matthew Kress and thanks for watching. Bye.